trains. Uh, so let's get, uh, uh, you, you know, the management of Titagar wagons on board. The BHEL Titagar wagons consortium has received an order from the rail ministry to manufacture 80 Vande Bharat train sets. The order value is at 9,600 crores, which means about 120 crores per train set. Uh, remember last month, the company was declared L2 for 200 train set orders. So is this the same one? Is it a new order? Umesh Chaudhary, the MD and CEO at Titagar Wagons joins in. Umesh, uh, good morning. First, if you can just clarify for us, is this part of the same order for which you had got L2 last month? And uh, that was for 200 trains, right? So this time you've bagged just 80 trains. Can you clarify what's happening here? Yeah, good morning. Yes, it is the same uh, tender. It was a tender for 200 uh, trains and uh, tender stipulated that the L2 bidder would get 80 trains and the L1 bidder would have gotten 120 trains. So we were the L2 bidders and we got the 80 trains uh, arising out of that. So are you expecting any more trains or is this it? 80 out of the 200 orders total? No, this is 80 out of the 200. So that tender stands closed uh, in the sense the uh, gap 200 would get uh, distributed between the L1 and the L2. But of course, you know, this is the beginning of a new opportunity. It's an, almost the beginning of a new era, I would say. Uh, because Vande Bharat type of trains are the uh, future for uh, the railway transportation in India. And the very fact that we've been able to get into this uh, with the 80 train, which is a substantial order, mind you, in even if you look at the global uh, scale of ordering for such type of trains, this is uh, perhaps one of the largest orders because this also has a maintenance piece to it. So while the basic okay. supply is 9,600, the total contract value would be about 23, 24,000 crores. Mm. All right. Hi, Mr. Chaudhary. Good morning and congratulations on this. Well, your share with BHL is around 55%. So does this apply to both the manufacturing as well as maintenance? Uh, yes, it is. A, uh, our share is about 52% to be precise, about uh, okay. we're about 52%, and uh, and uh, this is on a, a overall basis. So yes, it is the, on the supply and the maintenance part. All right. Just another counter question uh, for these to execute these orders: Do you have capacity, uh, adequate capacity, or do you have to put on fresh capacity, incur some capex as well? Give us some clarity out there. So, uh, you know, we would be producing these trains primarily in uh, our plant in Uttarpara, where we have been producing the Pune metro train and we'll be producing the, uh, the Bangalore metro with CRRC, etc. So we have capacity to produce this kind of trains, but, you know, considering the magnitude of this order, which will kind of uh, see us through for the next five, six years, so it will block one line of capacity. We are looking at expanding capacity and uh, so that, you know, we don't kind of uh, let go of the metro market which we work hard on developing. So one part of our capacity would be uh, blocked for this Vande Bharat, but we would be expanding and uh, incurring capex to expand capacity in order to continue to be uh, an important player in the metro segment as well. Uh, the contract also, the tender also stipulates that the final assembly and the testing of the train would be done at the railway workshop in Chennai. So in mm. ICF, the railways will give us a particular uh, uh, plant or a part of a plant where these trains would be then transported and assembled and BHEL's propulsion that is in their scope would be fitted into the train. So that's I the see. entire pack. <clears throat> Umesh, hi, morning. Uh, just a few uh, more questions. Uh, you mentioned this 24, 20, uh, 23 to 24,000 crore uh, value. What was that? Could you uh, clarify? Sure. That was the so total. The yeah. Yeah, the supply portion is about uh, 120 crore per train. And mm. uh, the maintenance that we will get is about one and a half times, 1.4 to 1.5 times of the supply price. So each year we would get a maintenance. So this is with a 35 year full, uh, full maintenance contract. And mm. globally, maintain a very good business to be in i mean uh, we've seen uh, whether it's in uh, this or any other capital goods sector so it's a very uh, uh, very interesting development because it, it kind of opens up a new avenue for uh, the railway rolling stock industry wherein uh, rather than just being a manufacturer we are also getting into the services part of it so you're saying that uh, for the 80 trains uh, over the value over the 35 years the total uh, receivables could be 20, 23,000 to 24,000 crores, if I got that correct. Yeah, 4,000 crores, that's right. Okay, got mm -hmm. it. Now, uh, could you, uh, and as you said, this is a new uh, opportunity. Uh, could you give us some context in terms of, uh, you know, what is the number of uh, Bande Bharat sort of trains which have been rolled out in, ter in terms of tenders, ordering, etc.? 
how much more visibility do you have at this point? I mean, even around the time of the budget, there was lots of expectation that we'll see a big announcement, a thousand new Vande Bharat trains, etc. Could you provide us with some uh, some clarity there? Sure. So uh, uh, the the government has been uh, very uh, very uh, vocal about this that they would like to move over to the Vande Bharat type of trains. Uh, the total, uh, you know, Vande Bharat started being produced in one of the railway units, which was ICF. Uh, now they're producing it in the other railway units, but then they decided that they would also buy these trains from the trade, you know, for, from people like us or the other rolling stock manufacturers like Alstom, etc., etc. So they floated three tenders. There was a first tender of 200, that is the one that we have uh, one uh, part out of. There's another two tenders that have been floated. One is been uh, submitted and not opened as yet. One is yet to be, uh, the price bid is yet to be submitted. Uh, so yes. that makes it. But we, we Sorry, understand uh, that, that makes it. Uh, uh, Umesh, sorry, we missed that number. That makes 400. it 400 trains. 400 okay. trains. Okay. Okay. But from that, way in its by themselves is producing maybe a couple of hundred or even a little more than that. So all told, you know, we we do understand that the uh, at least you know uh, a thousand trains of Vande Bharat uh, would uh, really come out uh, on track. Uh, over the next maybe five, seven years. So, you know, the period can be a okay. couple of years here, a couple of years there. But the intent mm. of the railway is to, or the intent of the government is to completely transform the way railway journey is defined in Got India. Got it, got it. So, you know, so this 1,000 trains, just, just to try and put some numbers to it, I'm sure you're expecting a lot more revenue visibility, right, as you bid for these tenders that will come through over the next five to seven years. Uh, if you look at your own revenue trajectory over the last many years, you are now sitting on a base of around 2,000 crores per annum. Uh, what do you think you can take it up to, given that you have not just this Vande Bharat orders, but also you're looking at exports, maintenance in a big way as well. Uh, what do you think you can take this trajectory to? annual uh, revenues so so we uh, if you look at the december revenue we did about 750 crores so that kind of takes us to a 3000 crore annualized revenue uh, situation now from where we have come four years five years ago we were in an annualized revenue of 300 crores so we have of course the journey uh, which is uh, which is quite meaningful uh, going forward, you know, we have to, uh, and, and this is this is also important uh, to state that, you know, in, in terms of our strategy, from being a wagon manufacturer, uh, we have now uh, emerged or we are trying to emerge ourselves as a, railing, a, a railway uh, system provider. So we've kind of uh, also proposed a change of our branding and our name from Dittagar Wagon to Dittagar Limited. And the two businesses that we are focusing on is on the freight rolling stock and on the passenger rolling stock. And both of them, uh, if, if you really look at the, the current revenue that we are getting, you know, the December quarter revenue, if I, if I kind of yeah. take that as a benchmark, that was 85% 80, from the freight rolling stock. So, right. you know, while that continues, the passenger rolling stock is a business that is, is kind of uh, just as a startup. You know, it's just starting now. So we yes. believe that there is a uh, good uh, kind of attraction. There's a good tailwind in terms mm. of the entire railway infrastructure spend in terms of the entire uh, space that we are in and we have right. been able to upgrade ourselves to be a, be an important player in this space. Got it. Very quickly, Mr. Chaudhary, final question. I'm reading a Novuma report. They believe that you'll do closer on 3,700 crores in FY25 with margins closer around 9%. Going by your order book and all that you said, is that doable? So I would not like to comment on uh, any, uh, uh, you know, we don't give any guidance as a, as a policy. So I would not like to comment on that. Um, but all I can say is that, you know, we have a very healthy order book. Uh, you know, we didn't speak about the digit railway. Revenue we, growth, you know, sir? Have, sir uh, double di <laughs> Mr. Chaudhary, double digit revenue growth possible from here on? That's doable, right? I think that's definitely, that's something which is definitely and possible in terms correct. of our revenue growth. Considering the order book and the ramp up that we yeah. have been able to. Mm -hmm. And margins in high single digits, 9% or you're doing already around 8%, 9% is doable. We have always given a guidance of a margin level of a sustained margin level of 8 to 10% and we continue All to right. do that. I would yes. like to probably highlight upon the wheel tender, you know, which is which is something which we didn't speak about, you know, which also we yes. got the letter of a, a couple of uh, a week ago along with yes. RK4G, which is a very yes. important part of our entire strategy you see with whether it's freight rolling stock or it is passenger rolling stock you know yes. india indian rolling stock business has always been impacted In, 
by lack of availability of wheel sets. Interesting. And, uh, part- like uh, Ramakrishna Forging, which is a pioneer in their uh, in their field, yes, uh, we said it is a it's a very uh, uh, kind of a very synergistic uh, advantage for both our companies. Absolutely, absolutely. So okay, just one us- one more question. Sorry, uh, just going back to if you can respond uh, briefly to this. Uh, so you know, trains were anywhere being rolled out, right? So there, uh, so this is a new train sets are different, uh, you know, uh, as compared to the earlier uh, trains which were being made. So, are we talking about the number of trains being rolled out being much more than before? Because is, is it, or is it the question of one replacing the other? I mean, the new replacing the old, uh, or, or is it the, is it that the order value per train is much larger, or is it that the private participation in these uh, new trains is much larger? Which one is it? Briefly, it's really a combination of all, but it is primarily a shift in the in the entire uh, rolling stock. Uh, uh, experience of the commuter. So, you know, basically what is Vande Bharat? It's an EMU. No, no, I, I got that. I got that. Umesh, but I'm, t- I'm saying, uh, I mean, the response has been fabulous and very, very well received. But from a business point of view, uh, from, from a manufacturer point of view, I'm just trying to understand uh, w- which of the three is, is it? So, from a manufacturer perspective, it is the trains, modern trains coming to private sector. Earlier, the... Okay. the, the uh, Trains were being produced by the railways of the old design. Here, the railways are saying that come and supply us modern, state-of-the-art, international quality trains where the private sector has a role to play. Mm. Mm. Okay. In fact, you know, I do want to also ask you about that whole, um, the JV with uh, RK forgings and and what you've bagged, but we've completely run out of time. So we'll take this opportunity and we'll take this discussion to another day. Uh, let's slip into a quick break on that note. On the other side of the break, we will have Mitesh Thakkar and Sudarshan Sukhani join in for some technical trades. Stay tuned. <laughs> 